good morning i hope you're fine today i'm going to say uh, some tricks about paper six questions because i know in the next week we're going to have the exam so that's why uh, i got all the tools out some of the tools so i'm going to talk more about the tools of uh, paper six questions first of all i'm going to start by the measuring the liquids if i want to measure any liquid how can i measure it i have three main ways to measure the volume of liquids number one i have the burette number two i have the measuring cylinder and number three i have the pipette but what's the difference between the three if i'm talking about the measuring cylinder usually they will ask you in paper six and your students is using uh, the measuring cylinder to measure any experiment any liquid so and they will ask you later how can you increase how this uh, experiment is going to be more accurate so i'm going to say i will replace my measuring cylinder by a burette or a pipette like, you know, burette or pipette are always more accurate but what is the advantage of using a burette i'm going to say in usually the burette it's easy to uh, sorry the measuring cylinder it's easy to use so if i will talk about the advantage i will say you know it's easy to use if i will talk about the disadvantage you know it is inaccurate but if i'm going to talk about the burette and the pipette what's the difference the pipette it cannot measure except 25 centimeter cube this is the maximum something else you know it's really slow yani the advantage you know it's easy to uh, uh, and it's accurate but the disadvantage you know it cannot uh, it is a little bit slow when you use the pipette to, for, to measure any liquid it's a little bit slow so if i'm going to talk about the advantage i will say uh, accurate but if i talk about the disadvantage i will say it's slow well something else a difference between burette and pipette and your burette as you see here this is zero but here this is 50 so it can measure till 50 centimeter cube but the pipette can measure only 25 centimeter plus and if i want to measure 24 let's say 24.4 centimeter cube i cannot use a pipette and it's really small but if you want to measure any volume you can measure even with fractions you can measure the the, the, the burette we can use the burette in a really easy way type something else if I'm going to use the burette in titration, what I used to do? First, you need to rinse your burette with water. So to clean it, if there is any impurities or something like this, you can clean the burette. So number one, you need to rinse it with water. Number two, you need to rinse it with the substance that you're going to fill with. And let's say I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to fill it with sodium hydroxide. So step one, I will rinse it with water. Step two, I'm going to fill it with sodium hydroxide. And I, when I want to fill the burette, usually we put the filter like this the filter funnel and then i start filling it so i'm going to fill it as i said by sodium hydroxide if i need to wash it with water he will ask me why do i wash it or why do i rinse it with water i will say to clean it how to remove any impurities then he will ask me what's the next step i will rinse it with sodium hydroxide he will ask me why if i will fill it with sodium hydroxide if i need to rinse it by sodium hydroxide first he will ask me why i will say to remove any impurities or to remove sorry any traces of water since I was washing it with water, so I need to remove if there is any traces of water. After washing it, I need to remove. Then you need to put down, if you are doing titration, let's say I'm going to put down a flask. Usually we put a flask and usually down we put a white tile. This is a very important question for Cambridge and for Alexa. Why I put a white tile, something like a white paper? Why I put down a white tile? So you can see the color change here clearly. Oh, please take care. You need to study the colors of the indicators for Cambridge and for Alexa. They are not going to be given. So this means once I will start titration, you are just going to fill the burette. Tab and take care. There is no here any bubbles. And then I'm going to put whatever the acid and the alcohol and then i'm going to start you need to steer while working and you need to put here some drops of indicator by using the dropper okay we take care we never use the universal indicator this is a very good question for paper six why we never use the universal indicator while doing titration because universal indicator as you see here it is having a wide range of colors so this is going to be very hard it's not going to work you need to you need to use methyl orange you can use uh, phenolphthalein 
something like this. But we don't, we never use a universal indicator. If he asks me why, I'm going to say because there is a, a wide range of colors. Then I'm going to start doing the titration as an example. In the questions of paper six, sometimes they ask you about the color change. If they ask you about the color change, you need to think what was done in the flask. If it was an acid, so this means if I'm, do, if I'm using phenolphthalene, this means it's going to change from colorless to pink. If, a down, if there was an acid, it's going to be colorless and it will change to pink. If I'm using a, a methyl orange, so it's going to change from orange to yellow. So you need to think what's down in the flask. If the, the substance down in the flask, the indicator and was put on an acid, so it's colorless. If it's, the indicator was phenolphthalein, so it's from colorless to pink once we start. So you need to take care what's down. Is it the acid? Well, it is the alkali. This is really important. Number two, if I want to measure if I want to do any experiment, we never use a beaker. Taban, this is a beaker. The beaker is not a way of measurement. The beaker is used just to mix. Just to mix. Yani if I want to form any salt, you want to form, you want to mix any two solutions, so you need a beaker. Like, and we never use a beaker as a way of measurement. It's not a way of measurement. Next, what's the difference between a flask and a beaker? Because many students, I don't know why they're confused. It's really simple. We have this, what's called, this one is a beaker. Taban, we have different sizes, as you see. But these are flasks. If you see here, all these are flasks. But what is the difference between both? This is called a rounded bottom flask, and this is called a conical flask. Is it going to make a difference in the answer? No, you can just say flask. But I'm saying, if you do, if you want to know the difference, so this is a rounded bottom flask, and this is a conical flask. There was a question before about the flask, and they were talking about the volume. If I was using a bigger volume, so this is going to take, yani if the volume was a small volume, and then I use the bigger one with the same experiment is it going to take a shorter time well a longer time like it's going to take a shorter time because since this is going to be uh, uh yeah, the, the depth of the solution is more this means the reaction is going to happen faster another question but since we're talking about titration there is a very common question they ask you about the temperature if i increase the temperature during uh, during titration is it going to affect the reaction does the titration will happen faster my answer is going to be no no, no effect because changing temperature is not going to affect titration the only factor that affect titration is concentration only and this is going to be your explanation you will say no effect of changing the temperature on titration because the only factor that affect titration is is changing concentration Type. What else? This is the stopwatch or stop clock. We usually use it when I want to measure the rate of any reaction. How fast is it? How slow is it? Uh, this is the spatula and this is the steerer and please take care of the difference. If I want to add any solid, you need to use a spatula. Yani let's say this is copper sulfate for the ones who didn't see copper sulfate before. It's a blue solid as you see here. It's lovely. It's a hydrated copper sulfate. This copper sulfate, if I want to add any solid, you need to use a steerer. You need to use a spatula. We never use a steerer. Why? Because the spatula is made of a metal, so no problem, you can add solids with the spatula. But we never steer with the spatula, because if you steer with the spatula, what will happen? It's going to react, yani imagine with me, and I'm going to steer with my spatula. What will happen? It's going to react with my solution or my mixture. So that's why we just add the mixture, we just add the solid by the spatula. But if I want to steer, you need to steer, you need to use a glass ste a glass rod or a steerer. Now in the exam, if you draw like this for you a beaker, and then he was putting here any solid like this, he will ask you, label this, you need to say spatula. Since there is a solid here, so it's a spatula 100%. Like, and if you find something like this drawn inside the beaker, I cannot say this is a spatula. And we never put it inside. This is a steerer. So take care about the difference between both. What about this? This is a dropper pipette. This is a dropper. We, we use it something like this. If I'm having any drops of indicator and I want to put some drops, usually we use a 
uh, a dropper, just few drops, to add few drops. What about this? This is our pastel and mortar. What do we use it for? We use it if I want to crush any substance, if I'm having any solid, any rock, any substance that is big pieces or large lumps. So I want to break it. That's why we use that pastel and mortar, which is really important to use. Like, what about this? I mean, all of you know this. This is a funnel, a filter funnel. And again, it's a question. It's usually, they usually ask you about the funnel. If I have any substance that's insoluble in water, we use usually a funnel, but take care. You need to use inside a filter paper. Then if you put it like this, it's not going to work. Something else about precautions. Many students, many questions, they ask you about the precaution. If I'm using something like an acid, something like sulfuric acid, in the lab what should i uh, what should i use while using an acid you need to use googles why they know this is up for safety you need to use this so he will ask you what's the safety precaution when you are doing this experiment so for sure i'm going to say googles and also you can add the coat you can add uh, uh, gloves that's all okay something else if i'm doing an experiment like electrolysis where any of the halogens uh, they are going to be produced like chlorine fluorine bromine any of the halogens this means you know if he will ask you what is the safety precaution you need to say uh, you need to do this experiment in a few cupboard you know few cupboard is going to take out all these it's going to remove all these toxic gases so please if you find any question for paper six he's asking you about a halogen or they are asking oh there is methane which is natural gas if you are having any of these gases uh, you're yeah, already is going to be produced from any experiment so please the priority in our answer is going to be the you covered then i'm going to talk about this again this is tongues this is one of the common uh, questions in the exam if they ask you about the tongue what do we use the tongue for we use the tongue if i want to heat if i'm doing any experiment i'm holding i want to hold the tube and this experiment uh, i want to hold i want to hold the, the the tube and you know that this is exothermic or uh, even if not exothermic the reaction the tube is going to be hot so this means i cannot hold it with my hand that's why we usually use the the tongs or if i want to burn magnesium something like burning magnesium if i want to burn a piece of magnesium you need to use a tongue what about this this is a um, you can say this is a washing bottle if i want if i was if i was preparing any salt then you use usually we uh, like this we you can use the uh, the washing bottle if you want to wash out any salt if you want to rinse any salt we usually use it what about this one this is called a crucible crucible we usually use it if i'm burning or if i'm heating any substance but i need something with a lid or a cover that's why we usually use our crucible something else this one is not that common which is a spirit burner spirit burner we usually use it it's not something advanced if you are not having a monster burner so we can use a spirit burner here this is an alcohol something like it and also it's going to be used as a fuel okay this is again one more question which is really important in the electrolysis question this is the bunsen burner if you check here you're going to find here an open hole and a closed hole if you check here if i want more the more flame and i want my flame to be getting stronger or more flame you are going to open the air hole if i want it to be less so i'm going to close the air hole i hope this will help you somehow while studying paper six thank you so much and please i want you to know in a paper Paper six is a very good chance to get a lot of marks. You know, it's really easy, and the questions and the ideas are really, are really repeated. Like the question of how to increase the reliability of any of any any experiment. You can just say, repeat the experiment, compare the results, uh, take average. You see, some questions are almost repeated. So if you studied only the main ideas, it's going to be really really easy for you. Thank you so much. I'm always there for help. If you need any help, just contact me, please. Best of luck. You can do. Thank you.